Hello and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. A couple of weeks ago I was invited at the Color Cloud in Hamburg and uh, that was actually my very first in-person presentation of uh, a topic and uh, what I presented was Power BI and Power Automate. These are two of my favorite tools uh, that I've been using for a couple of years now and since uh, two years ago the new connector for Power BI was presented in uh, for, uh, so for Power Automate in Power BI was presented and then I immediately made a video which which did very very well and um, since then unfortunately Microsoft has not given much love to the tool but uh, I thought I will go and um, maybe present again and indeed it uh, awakened a lot of uh, interest on during the presentation I had also a lot of questions and so I thought uh, why not create a video of what I presented on that uh, event. So uh, maybe there are many people out there who also need that, um, yeah, maybe idea. So what's the idea? What I did is I created a Power BI, um, a Power Automate um, button inside my report. As you can see, this is a demo report from the dashboard of the day. So what I'm doing in this case is that by clicking the Power Automate button, I'm sending some data and um, exactly to be said uh, country, state and revenue. And this data is sent then uh, filtered or not filtered um, to, to Power Automate. And then I'm creating a table, like an HTML table. Um, and you can either, then from, from there you can do whatever you want. Like you can, you can send that data like an email because you can put HTML tables in an email and you can make, make them pretty as well, which we don't have the time to do it today, but uh, just as an idea for you. And what you can also do is um, convert that HTML file. First of all, you need to save it as a file somewhere in the cloud and then convert it to a PDF. So you can send data as a PDF, maybe via email or however you like. Now in this case, we're just going to save it in local. Um, um, yeah, so what I also wanted to mention is, uh, sorry for not having the webcam on, but uh, I'm not at home at the moment. So I only have my laptop and I will try to make this as, um, yeah, as, as simple as possible for uh, the circumstances. Okay, so if you like the video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and that you subscribe to the channel. Have fun. Okay, so now we are back into our report. And as you can see here on the left hand side, I have already placed one. And we're going to take a look on how the final uh, report for this use case looks like. And um, yeah, so for this use case, what we are doing is we are sending some data to Power Automate and then we're putting that data into an HTML table format and we can either send that via email since as we know we can use HTML in emails uh, of course and make them also like uh, yeah, a bit more professional, a little prettier and maybe put like um, um, company designs and so on and so forth. Um, so, but we can also save that HTML file somewhere in, uh, in the cloud as an HTML file and then by using the convert feature in, um, in Power Automate from OneDrive, we can then create a PDF file out of that HTML file. So then maybe we can have like a PDF document with some data from Power Automate, uh, from Power BI, sorry. And then uh, you can then later on send that file somewhere else or maybe save it somewhere. It's up to you. It's just, just an idea. The possibilities there are very, very many. Okay. So what you do need to do first is uh, grab this Power Automate uh, connector here at the top from the ribbon in the insert section or from the right hand side where the visualizations are and then place it in your canvas. So after doing that, um, you will be asked or maybe not asked, but you will be, uh, let's take a look. So you, you will be uh, have, getting this description here, which um, it shows you how you can start creating your workflow. But um, the most important thing is, of course, to drag some fields into this right hand side here of your uh, Power Automate, Power Automate um, tile. So for me, I chose going with country, state and revenue so that I can have like uh, some hierarchical data here and some numbers. And since um, and then, of course, these are coming from two different tables like geography and sales. And since they have a relationship with each other, as you can see here, geography and sales have a one to many relationship. And this uh, works fine with each other. 
Okay, so to edit this uh, flow or to create your flow, you can click the ellipses here on the tile, click edit, and then you will land in the Power Automate Designer inside of your report. But what you can also do is you can go to the report designer in the uh, powerautomate.com uh, website. And then you will find that, uh, re uh, that uh, Power Automate workflow that you just created here as well. So here under your flows, you should be able to find your Power BI uh, flows as well. Now they have this Power BI icon. And it's uh, helpful because you have like a little bit more uh, screen real estate to work with. Okay, so um, the the flows that you can create from here are either from template or the instant cloud flow. No, there are no other cloud flow types like scheduled or automated since uh, we are placing the button on the screen, the flow will be triggered on that on the press button. So obviously it's only instant cloud flow. And then uh, what uh, happens is that when you trigger the workflow, the data has uh, from these fields filtered based on the slicers and where you selected in the report uh, is being passed through to Power Automate. And then let me show you real quick the idea that I had and uh, we can click here on edit. And we can see here that when um, the Power BI button is clicked, this is our trigger and you cannot do anything else with this here. So you continue then with the rest of the F steps. And what I did is I went and said, okay, pass the JSON, so I'm using the pass JSON action, uh, with the Power BI data. So with the values that are coming from my Power BI report after I click that button. And I created this schema here where I have country, state and revenue. Uh, this one you can create by just test running your workflow and then you have it in your run outputs of your trigger. So, so your trigger outputs. That's it. And then you can copy that schema and then generate it here from that example in your clipboard. Okay, so what happens here is that I get this, um, let's see, one of the one called run. So you can see some data, it looks better. Um, And, 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 and what you see then is, this is a schema again, and this is here the response. No? So I got, um, I clicked here on Germany, back to the report. So I clicked here on Germany and then click the run flow. And then I got the data for Germany filtered. And as you can see here, we have uh, the country, the state and the revenue. And the revenue is not formatted as a currency. In my report, you can see we have the data here formatted. It says 73, uh, sorry, 37 million dollars revenue in Germany. And that's of course split it down um, for each uh, state in that country. Let's try zooming in a little bit. Oops. Let's and if we see here, we have three states, Hamburg, Berlin, and then we have North Amazon. So if we see in our report, sorry, if we see in our flow, we have here Berlin, Hamburg, and North Amazon. So these three states and the revenue. So how can you go into this JSON here, response, and change the format of this revenue? For that, we can use the select option. So we are passing here that response from our parse JSON, and then we are changing the format to this format here. Let's go into edit real quick so that you can see how that is done. And here we are passing the body from the parse JSON, and we are mapping. So I just wrote down the, my columns, country, state, revenue, and then I'm just passing the data as it is for country and state because I don't want to uh, format anything there. And for the revenue, I'm using this format number expression. So I'm formatting the number from that item revenue and the format is this one here, C, D, A, D, E, which is for German. Uh, there's a website somewhere where these formats are shown. I will try to make to uh, place that in the description as well. Okay, so after uh, changing the data inside of our JSON, I'm just composing them here so that I can visualize it a little bit better. 
So let's go back to that test run so that we can see how the run looks like. And as you can see, then we have here in this compose action just those three um, uh, records in a uh, format away for the for the review. Okay, so here I'm doing going into two paths now. So I'm creating that HTML table, and as you can see here, it generates this a little bit nicer looking HTML table, and then I'm sending that via email. So let's see in the edit mode where that data comes from and how we are generating it. So to do so, you, you need this create HTML table action, that's how it's called, and I'm passing the outputs of that compose action, so which actually is pretty easy. Uh, so you don't need to use any expressions or anything else. You just paste that there and then that's it, because it already uh, has that, um, that array structure and then it generates an HTML table. And then you place these outputs here you know, from the create HTML table into your body from uh, the send an email connection. So on the parallel left side, what I'm doing is I'm creating uh, the same HTML table actually, so here. And uh, actually I could have saved this step into one, but it doesn't matter. And uh, then I'm creating a file in my desktop, which is um, in from my, from my OneDrive for business, from my personal OneDrive. And um, you need to make sure that you give it a name, of course, and the file content type, which is .html. And you give here also the similar, like in the email, the outputs from this create HTML table. And then what I'm doing is I'm converting this um, file by using its path. So the path is already there after it has been created, which is pretty easy. And then I say, okay, convert it into a PDF. Uh, and since uh, this conversion here does not create the file, it's just converted inside of Power Automate, um, you need to create that file with this um, yeah, type now. Uh, so I go again in my desktop and say file name now comes from this one here, which came from this one. So I just use that dynamic value file name so I don't have to think about uh, endings and types like here. And of course, the body from the file content of this conversion step. And um, after testing it, let's see, we should have one PDF file created and one email sent. So the email, if I open my emails now, oops, here. So there it is, I received this email and um, that's the data. No, so it's, as I said, it's it's not 100% beautiful. You can still work on that HTML table, but uh, it looks a little bit more readable for the user. No? So that's for the email. And if I go now to my desktop, I have this file, which is created today, 29th of April. And if I open it, you should be able to see this data here in a PDF format. Again, this is also not beautiful. You can still work on that. I'm not an HTML expert, but there are uh, great tools out there to help you uh, make this HTML uh, content a little bit prettier. And what you need to keep in mind, which I haven't done here yet, is you get this HTML that tests um, HTML file, which you can see here the file type is Chrome HTML document because we create the file here as an HTML. And then we get that and then convert it, but we don't delete it. So maybe you should add here after this has finished, like a delete item for that create file. You have the ID, you have the location, so it uh, should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, and then uh, after creating that file, uh, it's up to you what you do with it. You, know, you can save it, uh, you, can, you can leave it there, you can save it in SharePoint, you can send it via email or whatever. So yeah, that's uh, actually it with this uh, video, as I said. Um, Pretty straightforward, but pretty helpful. Um, before uh, I close it, I want to go through with you some limitations that have been there for a long time and hopefully Microsoft will do something against it so that you don't get too overwhelmed and uh, then uh, disappointed. So some known limitations. The user running the flow within the Power BI report needs to have permissions to run the flow, of course. So you need to share that flow as well, not only create it and place it in the report, you need to share that um, that, re that flow with the user. 
Um, yeah, so the, the flows are only the tenant's default environment. That's also another problem. So you cannot select the tenant like when you create a Power App inside of Power BI, when you can select the tenant. Maybe that comes someday. I don't know yet. Hopefully. Um, so don't go directly to Power Automate to create these flows. Exactly. So you need to create them from Power BI button trigger, uh, but then you can go to the flow website to edit them. Uh, power data is sent to and processed in geography where the flow is deployed. The power to visual is support for PASS uh, embedded scenarios. So you can, if it's uh, embedded, it will not, the power to PR report, it will not work. Um, so if the power BI report is embedded, the flow will not work this way around. And the power to visual will not work for published reports because users are unauthenticated. So which means that you can also publish a report in a public website. You know, so open for everyone. And these flows will not work because, as it says, you know, it, it needs to authenticate the user. And which is the biggest bummer here, the power to is limited to process a maximum of 1,000 records. This has been a limitation for a long time, and I think 1,000 records is very, very low. Um, um, so I hope that this will be, um, yeah, will be raised a little bit in the future, the near future. I've seen in forums like people begging for the last two years to, to raise this number. But yeah, that's that's actually it. I hope you liked this video. Again, sorry for not uh, having a webcam on. I hope the audio quality is also uh, halfway decent since I'm recording everything from my laptop. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the videos uh, in, the, in the comments, and I will make sure I place all the links and information in the video description. And um, yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, have fun, and catch you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.